This is the Specialized Turbo Como, which is a cruiser electric bike platform. And in particular, it is the 3.0. There's also a 4.0 and a 5.0 with nicer components, higher battery capacity, more powerful motor. And it's the IGH, so it's like this internally geared hub. And in this case, it's actually continuously variable transmission from Enviolo. So you shift and it's like there's this ramp and these orbs inside. You get a really smooth uh, variable between low cadence and high cadence. This bike is $37.50. So, you know, you're spending some, some money here. If you step up to the 4.0, it's $47.50, 5.0, $57.50. So there's $1,000 increments between each different version. It comes in four frame colors. We're looking at the red here and three frame sizes. This is the large. Now Specialized also offers the Como SL, which stands for super light. It's roughly 15 pounds lighter and it has a weaker motor and a battery pack that's not easily removable and it's lower capacity. I've done a full review on that separately. I just wanna call it out in case you're, you know, getting mixed up with all these options. So I wanna get back to the drivetrain for a second here. So that's the Enviolo. It's gonna add some weight. There's a little bit of friction when you're shifting this thing. It's not just like jumping from one gear to the next. But one of the advantages is you can shift at standstill just like this, which is wonderful if maybe you're climbing a hill and you forgot to shift down in preparation for the stop. You can just adjust that when you're stopped at standstill. And look how clean this thing is. We got the Gates carbon belt drive here. It's very reliable, more reliable than a chain. It's quiet, it's not greasy. There's no derailleur hanging down that can get bumped out of position that would need maintenance. It's all just sort of sealed and beautiful. A lot of people have been excited about uh, gates and about you know internally geared hubs and continuously variable transmission. So it's neat to see Specialized offering that. If you want, you can get a Como with a traditional cassette and they have several versions of that as well. I picked this one because I think for cruising, it's just a great platform. It's sort of worry-free. These bikes are so approachable. You know, it's you just step right over, You've got this upright body position with ergonomic grips and the, the gel saddle and everything. Now they have a suspension fork and they've upgraded the frame. So I've covered this bike several times over the past, you know, 10 years. And over time they've they've evolved it. So the last version of the frame had two kind of down tubes. And that was probably to keep it stiff. Uh, now they've been able to go with just one, so you have a lower standover height, and then it hides the battery just beautifully. So it's a, it's a bigger down tube, but it's kind of angular, very sturdy. You can see the welds here, and then that extra thick bottom bracket there with the motor. I haven't had any problems with frame flex, and you just get this really great experience. Interestingly, it's, it's sort of the same battery design that we see on the Vado, which is a more upright, kind of commuter, city-oriented bike. And then they have the Taro, which is like a hardtail mountain bike. So it's, it feels like they've got this battery and motor system that they're sharing across all the different platforms. And you've just got to ask yourself, do I want the really relaxed version or do I want a little bit more aggressive kind of commuter or the off-road version? Now I say that and I've actually ridden this off-road through the rocks and up a pretty steep hill just to get here. Even with the 3.0, with the 50 newton meter rated motor and the lower capacity 530 watt hour battery pack, I've been doing just fine. This had no problem climbing. I did downshift a little to the easier gears, um, but it was just fine. I weigh 135 pounds. I'm about 5'9", so, you know, your mileage may vary. I want to get back to comparing the different versions. So if we go from the 3.0 to the 4.0, you're going to get a 710 watt hour battery pack and a 70 newton meter mid-drive motor. It's kind of the same hardware. This is a partnership between Specialized and Broza. Very quiet, very smooth, and I think there's even like a belt drive system within the motor. And that's one of the ways that, that Broza sort of differentiates themselves. Very compact and lightweight as well. If you go up to the 5.0 Como, then you're going to get 90 newton meters of torque and that same 710 watt hour battery pack. So again, this one's like the lowest capacity battery, which helps to keep it lighter weight and more affordable. Other differences is you'll see this nice suspension fork right here with 80 millimeters of travel. If you go up to the 5.0, you get a nicer fork. It's like an air fork that's more adjustable. You have nicer lights and nicer brakes. These ones have dual piston calipers, whereas you'd get like quad piston. So just more high performance. For me personally, for a cruiser bike, 
you know, performance isn't such a big concern. And when I think about the weight and stuff, I'm usually not riding my cruiser like all across town. I'm not really worried about the range. So having a lower capacity battery and saving some money is just fine with me. But if you're a little bit heavier and you plan to use those higher levels of assist and maybe you, you want those extra strong brakes and a nicer suspension fork, well then go for it. This really could be a commuter platform because it comes with these amazing fenders, integrated lights, and a beautiful rear rack. And the rack interfaces with their custom fenders. So it's MIK HD, so that's it's kind of a compatibility with different uh, baskets and bags and things. But if you just wanted to get generic stuff, you can easily connect a trunk bag to the top of this and pannier bags on the sides. We do have a bungee loop. There's even a little slider thing here so you can kind of lock the pannier into position so it wouldn't be sliding back and forth and flapping around quite as much. This thing is rated at 27 kilograms versus 25 kilograms. So it's like almost 60 pounds. I can imagine putting a child seat on this or something. Lots and lots of options. Coming back to the fenders, 65 millimeters wide, and they are tubular, meaning it's not just one piece of aluminum. There's kind of like some ridges built in, and they're extra long. So you can see there's a little rubber flap down here, and at the front, it's just like so low. They call this the flex tender. So if you hit a curb or a log or something, it just kind of flexes out of the way. It doesn't break, but it's going to protect your shoes and your shins so much better than almost every other fender I've seen. And look at this really sturdy support arm. It's mounted to the lowers of the suspension fork. It's not using plastic cuffs or anything. I mean, this is this is very sturdy. It's not bouncing around or anything. And then the, there's like a channel system that diverts water out to the sides. So if you're riding really fast, the water isn't going to spray out the front because, you know, it kind of sticks to the tire and then whoop. And it's, it, in some cases, it can actually blow up into your face. So Specialized has really optimized these fenders. And they didn't originally come with like the cruiser bikes. This was for their like high-speed commuter bikes. And now they've just used that same technology across the whole line and you get it here. Just wonderful to see. Look at this through axle down here, 15 millimeters. So it's, it's extra sturdy stuff. That's like mountain bike grade. I'm not used to seeing that. Now you don't have a quick release on the front or the rear, but you know, these tires are pretty nice. I, I feel like they were, they're gonna hold up pretty well. See their Pathfinder Sport with black belt puncture protection. So, you know, back to the quick release. Maybe it's not a, as much of an issue here. And on the other side, if we look at the specs, these are 27.5 by 2.3. So they're a little bit wider, which is gonna give you some stability and increases your contact patch a bit. If we look at the tread on these, it's got this like flat strip down the middle, which is very quiet and efficient, but we do have a little bit of tread on the sides in case you do go off-road. It's gonna give you some additional traction. Most cruiser bikes that I see, they have like these balloon tires and they're really big and they're kind of comfortable and spongy, very much like this. But to see 27.5 versus 26, you know, it's a taller wheel, which gives you a lower attack angle. So I actually think it's gonna smooth the cracks and bumps even better. I feel like this is just an excellent choice and everything is just set up perfectly for it. The fork, the fender, you got the reflective sidewall stripe for safety. This graphic, they're all reflective. You can see right here, integrated reflectivity for safety. I love that. And then that rear light, let's go ahead and just press the power button here. There, it comes to life pretty quickly. And then by default, the lights are turned on. So this is a Spinninga light and it's built right into that rack, runs off the main battery and it shines out the sides as well as the back. It's very, very visible. It's gonna keep you a little bit safer, I think. And then up front we have this Lazine headlight. You would get a nicer light if you pay more for the 4.0 or 5.0, but this is already pretty good. It doesn't quite have the side cutouts that I look for, but the positioning of it is excellent. A lot of times I'll see lights that are mounted to the arch of the suspension. In this case, it's up here on the crown, just below like the steering tube. So it's a bit higher and it's sprung. So a lot of times if it's mounted here, it's unsprung, meaning it's bouncing up and down along with the, the tire and the lower portion of the suspension. So this is just going to be more durable. It's a better position. It might be even better if it was way up here, but then you start to get kind of crowded, especially with the display and everything. So I want to compliment that they've got a flick bell. I like this upright swept back design. However, you can't really adjust this. The handlebar is integrated into the stem. It's sort of their you know, custom proprietary design. Uh, sometimes I like to swivel handlebars forward and back or swap them out and get longer bars or you know a steeper stem. You really can't do that. You're just, this is what you got. So it's one of the things to think about. I, I should mention that the seat post, 34.9 millimeters, 
This thing is super, super long. It's like 450 millimeters long. A normal seat post is 350. Um, I guess they just did that so you can accommodate a really tall rider, but you could also swap this out, maybe use a shim and put a suspension seat post on, and then you'd have like a full suspension feel on these bikes if you really want that comfortable ride. That's what I like. This is more open source than the handlebar, which is just kind of custom, and it does have that mount for the display. I should say the display, while it technically it's removable, there's a little set screw underneath, you can twist it. You can't really take it off the bike because it's wired in. These wires have to stay connected. Um, the brakes, everything else is pretty standard up here and they are adjustable reach levers. We have these 180 millimeter rotors that are gonna cool quickly and give you a good mechanical advantage. Everything else is kind of as you would expect. 170 millimeter crank arms with a nice plastic scuff guard. So it's gonna keep them looking great. If your shoe passes this over time, sometimes it rubs off the paint. To me, that's like overkill, especially for a cruiser. And we have these plastic platform pedals from VP with a sandpaper grip. That's fairly nice. I, I should complain a little though. I noticed that if you slip off, I mean, they really spin. There's not a lot of friction in that, that motor, that spindle down here, as I've seen on some other mid drives. It also doesn't cycle the chain or the belt backwards. So in terms of doing drivetrain maintenance, you might have to have a stand and kind of hang the bike up. And again, if you're riding this thing and your shoes are wet, and let's say you kind of sh slip off like this, you can come around and bonk your shin just like that. And it's just not, it's not the best feeling in the world. I do love that they have a rubberized slap guard top and bottom, even though it's not really necessary for a belt, it's the same thing if you get the chain version, which the chain could bounce up and down. So I like that. And we've got this plastic sort of chain cover. It's gonna protect your pants or your dress from getting snagged. Just beautiful. I mean, these bikes, look at this black spokes, black rims, everything is, is just so beautiful on these bikes, internally routed cables and stuff. They've even got a bottle cage bosses right here. And I feel like that's a fairly decent position. You can imagine if there's a bottle here, you're still gonna be able to step over the frame without kicking those all the time. All of the electronics, including the display, the battery, the motor, it's IPX6 water and dust resistant, which is fairly good. So this is a more durable electric bike. You know, you're paying a bit more. Specialized has a, a good reputation. They have all those dealers and an extended warranty for this. Uh, as we get down, just looking at the drivetrain, this is the mechanically shifted internally geared hub. And I wanted to point out that they used to have kind of an infographic that showed what was going on. Now it's just sort of blank. So you just, you know, it's like easier if you shift forward, harder if you shift back. And I think this is sort of the, the faster version where, you know, you don't have quite as many turns to make, which is faster, but it, it's also a little bit less precise. I've been doing just fine with it, but I wanna point that out. We've got a nice flick bell right here. And then we kind of get down to the battery pack. These are the keys, AXA, insert right here. And then you use this lever to kind of push down and push the battery out. I found that it's, it's fairly difficult to do with one hand while I'm filming. And the battery can kind of get stuck in there. It takes a little bit more effort, but I guess that's better than having it just tumble right out and hit the ground. Uh, we do have that fender that's fairly close, but there's enough room here to make it work. Keep in mind, again, this is the large frame size. I feel that the, the key location, it's a little vulnerable near that pedal and crank arm, but at least it doesn't pass directly by it. I've seen some others that are like right there. So I guess it's okay. I'm gonna go ahead and just put this back and I wanted to show you the charging port. So if you look in there, this is the Energy Bus Rosenberger. It's kind of a magnetic charging standard, which is cool. Magnet meaning if you trip over the cable while it's being charged, it just pops right out. It's not gonna crack or something. And again, it's, it's clear of that crank arm and pedal, but it's still a little bit close and it's low and it's on the, non-drivetrain side, you see the kickstand, the bike is like tilting towards me. So I find that when I go to charge it, I'm like bending down and then I hit my head on the handlebars frequently. I wish the charging port and the locking core were up here. This is the best place to have it. Uh, it's even gonna be safer from water and stuff, but I guess it's just easier for them to put it there. So if we look at the battery charger and just the whole like kit that they give you this neoprene zipper bag is awesome whole bunch of manuals and stuff there's even a lanyard so you can bring your keys along and try not to misplace them it's cool they give you a couple keys 1.9 pounds on this 
four amp charger. I mean, this is way above average. It's gonna fill that battery in no time, especially on the, the 3.0, because it does have that 530 watt hour, 36 volt battery pack. And there's the interface. Got some extra little goodies here. Back up here at the cockpit, power the display on again. It is nice that you can swivel it back and forth to reduce glare. And I love that they've got a little USB-C charging port built right in. And I've tested this with my iPhone. I had to get a special cable off Amazon USB-C mail to Lightning mail, but it did work. And that's great because they have a really good mission control smartphone app. And it's the same app across their entire line of bikes. It lets you plan trips and set like a, a relative level of charge remaining. So basically you could get to your destination and know that you weren't fully out of battery. And it's basically gonna regulate how much power and support the motor gives you dynamically. They even have a heart rate monitor connectivity so you can set your heart rate to sort of be at a certain healthy level and the bike will adjust and keep you in that health zone. And you can set like, of course, route planning and everything. You can update your own software without having to go to the shop every time. It's gotten better and better over the years. It's one of my favorite apps. So being able to plug that in and charge it is great, but I also don't know exactly where I would mount the phone, especially because this is sort of like a oval bar instead of a standard round bar. So you continue to hear me sort of complain about this custom bar. Yeah, it's aesthetically pleasing and it's fairly comfortable, but is that really worth like all the other limitations that I'm talking about? I don't think so. Uh, but that said, again, the display itself is fairly nice. There are these beeps and like haptic feedback as we adjust assist levels. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna press the minus button, take it all the way down to off, right? So now it's just an, a bike with a battery and lights and the app. And as soon as we press the plus button, we go from off to eco and you can see it's colored. So there's like this blue, sport is green and turbo is orange. And that's it. You try to push more and you get this like vibration. There's no beep uh, confirming it. The display is pretty bright. Thankfully, with that mission control app, you can actually adjust the brightness levels, which is wonderful, but you need the app to do that. And by the way, I should say, part of the specialized warranty is contingent upon you downloading the app and registering your bike. So they're really trying to get people like onto that system. Um, if you're someone who doesn't like apps, yeah, the bike still works, but there are just a few extras that you're gonna get. So now that we're here, I think if we press the F2 button, which is down here, we can micro adjust. So within that turbo, we can adjust the power in 10% increments. That's pretty special. I haven't seen that a lot of other places. And if I press the F1 and just tap it, it goes to the different readouts. So we can see distance and ride time. It's basically just the display layout changes. Battery percentage, gotta love that. So it's very precise. Consumption, estimated range. And as we change assist levels, the range would update as we pedal along, which is kind of cool. Altitude, <laughs> negative 25. I don't know how that works. Uh, altitude gain, altitude descent, and then just a whole bunch more thing, infinite tune. So that's what I was talking about, those little steps, the 10% increments, calories burned, odometer. It's pretty comprehensive. I, I like that a lot. Oh, and here's the battery percentage again, along with a clock and stuff. They're really squeezing a lot in for what I would consider to be a fairly small display, but I guess it blends in and it's not gonna get damaged as easily, especially at a bike rack. It's positioned right there, almost protected by the handlebars and stuff. If we press plus and minus together, it would take us into the settings. We can change our units, date and time, the sensors, the altitude. There's a lot we can do here or in the app. And I think plus, if we, if we hold that for a second, there we go, we get walk mode. It just kicks on and the bike starts to push itself, which can be very handy if you're loaded up with gear. Maybe you do have that child seat set up. And then if we hold F1, we can turn the lights off. Maybe you're on a moonlight ride and you don't wanna spoil the setting. Uh, but of course, for safety, it's nice that those are usually enabled by default. There's just a, a lot to appreciate. I have a separate video where I just go in depth on the display and the app. Once you've sat down with it and you know read through some of the manuals and stuff, these bikes can be really cool. So with that said, I'm gonna hop on this thing and we'll go take it for a little ride. From here, you can see that 50 tooth belt ring or chain ring up front and 24 tooth sprocket in the rear with that like infinite gearing, continuously variable transmission. I'm gonna pedal along in the highest level of assist so you can hear that motor. And I'm gonna change my cadence 
I'll be using turbo just so it's the most, it's like the loudest and most responsive. brakes are working incredibly well and I didn't hear any rattling like over the gravel or the, the the concrete blocks it, it was really quiet there you go you shifting gears yeah nice it's pretty powerful oh yeah it is this is actually the weakest one you know really? 50 newton meters of torque how does it feel to you oh yeah um, it's fast just it, whenever you step on the pedal there's mm -hmm. Really responsive. Really, really, really. Very stable. His wide tires with that smooth track right down the middle. Okay, let's do a nice view here. Got a pretty steep hill in front of us. Even with the 50 newton meter motor, it's pretty capable, you know, especially if you shift down. It's my off road here a little bit. Well guys, I think that's it. Big thanks to Caps Electric Bikes in Port Moody for letting me borrow one of their kind of demo bikes and going through this in detail. Back at electricbikereview.com, I have a comparison tool. So you could compare this to the Vado, again, slightly more active commuter orientation, or the Taro, which is like the hard tail, maybe cross country mountain bike. They all have the similar battery and motor. I really love what Specialized has been doing. I love all the colors, the frame sizes. Sometimes it's just a matter of finding the color and the size you want. Like, is it in stock? Can you find a dealer that has it? I welcome your feedback in the comments here and electricbikereview.com. We got some forums. The idea is to, you know, help you pick the right accessories or bags and, and get feedback from other people. I mean, I'm on a brand new bike. It works perfectly, having a lot of fun. Uh, again, this is a free review, just doing my best to help. This was also requested. There was someone in the forums who said, hey, Court, can you, can you check this out? I'm trying to, you know, compare this to the Gazelle and Electric Bike Company. And so I did. I try my best to, to help you guys out. I love you. Ride safe. And we'll see you next time.